famine, drought, disease. For most of ancient China's history, survival was a daily battle. Yet in the middle of this struggle, ordinary people created inventions so brilliant they kept entire communities alive and could still save us today. These aren't just relics in museums. They are tools born of desperation, forged in resilience and built to outlast time itself. Let's see what exactly were they. At first, we have the iron plow, born out of hunger, backbreaking work, and the constant fear of famine. Picture a farmer in ancient China, standing barefoot in a cracked field. His hands are raw from gripping a wooden plow all day. The sun has baked the ground so hard that every step feels like trying to dig into stone. Weeks of labor might yield just enough grain to survive the winter, or not enough at all. Before the iron plow, this was normal. Wooden tools could scratch at the surface, but heavy clay and compact soil barely budged. Planting was slow, shallow, and exhausting. A single bad season meant children going to bed hungry, elders wasting away, and families watching their stored grain run out long before spring. Around the 6th century BCE, blacksmiths changed that fate. By shaping plow blades from iron, they created something sharper, stronger, and far more durable. Suddenly, farmers could tear through the toughest earth, turning over rich soil that had been locked away for centuries. Planting was quicker, seeds took root deeper, and harvests grew. This wasn't luxury, it was survival. A single tool could mean a full granary instead of an empty one, hope instead of hunger. And even today, in the age of tractors and combines, the principle is the same. Break the ground, plant the seed, feed the people. The next challenge for survival wasn't in the soil, but in the air and sky, finding water when the land offered none. Imagine a summer in northern China 2,000 years ago. The riverbed is dry, cracked like broken pottery. The village well has turned to mud. Women walk for hours with empty buckets balanced on worn shoulders, hoping for even a few mouthfuls of water to bring back. Children cry from thirst. Livestock collapse in the heat, ribs showing through their hides. Every day without water is a step closer to losing everything. Before deep well drilling, once the surface water vanished, so did hope. Families abandoned their homes, chasing rumors of distant streams. The strong struggled. The weak often didn't survive the journey. Even if they reached water, there was no guarantee they could stay. During the Han Dynasty, Chinese engineers found a way to fight back. Using bamboo poles, iron bits, and rope systems, they learned to drill hundreds of feet into the earth. It was slow, back-breaking work, but when the drill broke through and water surged up, it was like life itself returning to the village. These wells could supply entire communities through the harshest droughts. Farmers could keep crops alive. Livestock could survive the dry months. People could cook, wash, and drink without counting every drop. Deep well drilling didn't just bring water, it brought stability. It turned desperate migrations into settled lives, allowing villages to endure in places where survival had once seemed impossible. With water and food secured, another challenge arose, making sure vital knowledge about survival was never lost to time. Picture a village in ancient China struck by an early frost. Crops fail before they ripen. People are cold, hungry, and unsure how they will survive the winter. Somewhere, a neighboring village has faced this before. They know when to plant earlier, how to store grain better, and which herbs can keep illness away. But without a way to record and share that knowledge, it is lost with each generation. Before paper, information lived on bamboo strips or silk scrolls. Bamboo was heavy, awkward to carry, and slow to produce. Silk was expensive, reserved for the wealthy and powerful. For ordinary people, vital knowledge often vanished because it couldn't be preserved. Mistakes were repeated and lessons had to be learned the hard way. In 105 CE, Kai Lun refined a method of making paper from mulberry bark, hemp, rags, and old fishing nets. It was light, durable, and cheap enough for widespread use. Suddenly, wisdom could be stored in every home, planting calendars, medical recipes, maps to safe water sources, and warnings about past disasters. 
Paper wasn't just about storytelling or art. It carried instructions that saved lives. A farmer could copy planting dates proven to survive frost. A healer could pass down treatments for fevers. A family could record the flood levels from past decades to know when to move to higher ground. In a world without electricity or internet, paper was the ultimate backup system. And when that knowledge needed to be put into action, whether hauling harvests, moving supplies, or carrying the injured, another invention made human strength go much further. Imagine hauling sacks of grain from the fields to the village with nothing but your back and a rope across your shoulders. The load bites into your skin. Your legs ache from walking over uneven ground. The sun is setting and you still have to go back for more. In ancient China, this was daily life. Moving heavy loads meant calling on every able body in the community, often leaving fewer hands to plant, cook or care for children. When the wheelbarrow appeared during the Han Dynasty, it was more than a clever cart. It was a lifeline. One person could carry what once took three. Grain from the harvest could be moved before the rain ruined it. Firewood could be brought home in a single trip instead of ten. Injured people could be transported to safety when every second counted. Its single wheel and balanced frame meant it could pass through narrow, muddy paths where larger carts could not. In times of war, soldiers pushed wheelbarrows loaded with supplies through terrain impassable for animals. In peacetime, farmers used it to haul fertilizer to the fields or bring their goods to market without exhausting themselves before the day began. The wheelbarrow multiplied human strength when it was needed most. It didn't require a horse or ox, just a willing set of hands and the will to keep moving. And when people fell ill or were injured, another kind of ancient knowledge stepped in. One not made of wood or iron, but of leaves, roots and the healing power of the land. In ancient China, falling sick could be terrifying. A simple fever might turn deadly. A cut from farm work could become infected and take a life. There were no modern hospitals, no antibiotics, and often no trained physician within reach. For families in remote villages, illness meant fear, not only for the patient, but for everyone who relied on them to survive. This is where herbal medicine became more than tradition. It was survival. Over centuries, healers walked the mountains, fields and riverbanks, learning which plants could bring down a fever, stop bleeding, calm a cough or ease pain. Willow bark soothed aching joints. Honeysuckle cleared heat-borne fevers. Ginger settled the stomach and warmed the body in winter chills. Ginseng restored strength after a long illness. Every leaf and root carried the possibility of saving a life. These remedies weren't locked away in imperial palaces or reserved for the wealthy. They could be grown in a small garden, gathered from the wild, or traded at a local market. In a time of crisis, a family didn't have to wait days for a doctor from the city. They could step outside and find medicine with their own hands. The knowledge was precious, and it was guarded. Formulas and techniques were passed down in families, sometimes written on scraps of paper, so they would not be forgotten. While some treatments came from belief and tradition, many were grounded in real effectiveness. Modern science has confirmed that the active ingredient in willow bark works much like aspirin. The survival lesson is clear. Knowing how to heal with the land can be the difference between life and death when other options are gone. Even now, with pharmacies on every corner, there's wisdom in remembering how to heal when the shelves are empty. And just like the iron plow, deep wells, paper and the wheelbarrow, it proves that some of humanity's oldest tools remain ready for the next time the world tests us. Looking at these five inventions, it is easy to think of them as relics of the past. But they were born from necessity, from the raw human instinct to survive against nature's unpredictability. And that is something we still face. Climate change brings droughts and floods. Natural disasters can cut off access to modern supply chains. In those moments, technology from 2,000 years ago can feel brand new. The iron plow's principle lives in small-scale urban farming. Deep well drilling remains a backbone of rural water supply. Paper endures as the ultimate backup system for knowledge. The wheelbarrow still carries the load when roads are gone. Herbal medicine offers options when the pharmacy shelves are bare. 
Ancient China's survival tools were not just clever, they were deeply human. They combined practicality with resilience, born from a culture that valued harmony with the land, but also understood the need to outsmart its dangers. The people who created these tools lived without laboratories, satellites, or supply chains. They had only their hands, their minds, and an unshakable will to keep their communities alive. Every invention was born from necessity, tested by hardship, and refined through generations. Today, they stand as reminders that survival often depends on ingenuity more than technology. In a world where modern systems can fail, these ancient solutions still hold the power to save lives. Which of these do you believe would matter most if we had to start from scratch? Share your thoughts in the comments, and if you enjoyed exploring the wisdom of ancient China, subscribe for more stories of history's most enduring and life-changing ideas.